Good day, welcome to Art with Alison. Uh, first of all, I might sound a bit funny, I've got a sore throat, so. Also, you might be hearing noises from my dogs. I do live with a lot of dogs, and I've also got a new litter of puppies, so the dogs often snore. <laughs> they they um, uh, just about have their afternoon nap, I think and they usually snore quite loudly. I've got about eight or about, I've got eight dogs, one puppy and eight baby puppies because I've got a new litter of puppies. Anyway, just explaining that so there'll be noises from those. Now today I'm going to be doing a bit of an experiment. I've been watching Melly D. I don't know if you guys have watched her but she's absolutely amazing. I love uh, she always does some interesting projects and I believe it was she who came up with the uh, cloud effect by adding satin enamel to the paint. So it's not just ordinary satin enamel paint but from the deco art range, the Americano decor satin enamels. And uh, what she usually uses that I've seen anyway is the white and you add the white to um, other colours, as in, you know, you lay your cup and your white has got the satin enamel in it, and then when you pour it out, the, those parts turn into a lovely sort of fluffy, cloud-like um, areas of your painting. Now, what I recently learned from Melly D is that if you have your satin enamel in one paint and satin enamel also in another paint, they cancel each other out and you don't get that cloud effect. So I thought that was interesting and that did explain a previous painting of mine where I would added satin enamel to a lot of different paints expecting a huge explosion and, and didn't get it. So that, that was interesting. So today I'm going to be using a dark blue colour, which this is called the dark denim in the satin enamels. And I'll explain how I made it up. First of all, I made up like uh, it's a dark royal blue to a na almost navy by using uh, mainly cool blue with some warm blue added to it and then a touch of black. Sorry, but I wasn't um, measuring my quantities. I was just going by eye and finding what color I wanted. So I made this lovely, I love this color. I don't know if it comes up in the video, um, but it's really quite a lovely color. Then I added, um, well, I got a different container and put Okay, no, I've missed, missed a bit. So I've made up the colour and then to the paint, I then added two parts of Floetrol. So one part paint, two parts Floetrol. Just add the Floetrol in gradually and stir it in. And to, uh, basically until you get the consistency out that you want. But I did find that the two parts Floetrol, to the, depends on the paint you're using too, as to how much Floetrol to use. I don't add any silicon oil to my paints and and also there's no water in them so then I added one another third so I poured it in used about half of this actually um, into this container here making up um, to be one third of the total amount has got satin enamel in it. So that's what I've got there. Just explaining that part. Now I shall, I'm just, just going to do these experiments on some little eight inch by eight inch canvases or 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So just pop that to the side for the minute and I shall layer the cup. And I will start with a because it has got quite a lot of satin enamel in it, I also don't want it to take over with the cloud effect, which can happen, um, where it sort of get this explosion in the middle. I'm going to use my base coat too. I'm not going to put satin enamel in the base 
in the base coat because I don't want it to uh, cancel out the effect basically. So now, oh, I'm, and this is the first time I've used this. This is the Deco Art Garnet. This is the Extreme Sheen paint and this is the Garnet. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd get one bottle because I have to order them online. And didn't know what it would look like. I was expecting it to be more brown, but no, oh, it's just a gorgeous, beautiful, oh, deep red, really. It's almost maroon color. It's just a lovely, rich red. It's beautiful. Anyway, put these in these square containers because hopefully I can just pour it out of the corner. And these Extreme Sheen paints I've made up to be about one part paint to only three quarters of a part Floetrol because I wanted it to be nice and thick. So, yeah, I'll just show you. It's lovely and thick and creamy. When you're doing a, a straight pour or a ring pour, I find it's, it is best to have your colours on the thicker side and that way you get the separating rings. Now this here is just ordinary plain white mixed one to one with Floetrol. This is just house paint actually, it's British Paints house paint. A little bit of that. Hopefully, give it a little bit of a highlight. And some. This is the 24K in the Deco Art. Just going to do fairly thin layers. And now I'll add a bit more of the. One with a satin enamel in it. Do a bit more this time. Just see what what happens really with it. All right, now this one here is also the Deco Arts in the Aquamarine. So many beautiful colours in the Deco Arts. That in an hour range, so I'm finding. Dog snoring. Alright, what will I do next? I was trying to decide whether to keep it with just a few simple colours or maybe have a few more. Okay, so yes, I've decided to add a little bit of the, this is Liquitex in the deep turquoise. I think that will just, the reason I'm doing this is because I think it will give a bit of depth to the aquamarine. It's nice having the light colours, but you want a dark colour to, to give it a bit of contrast. Helps bring the light colours forward by giving it like a shadowy effect behind it. That's the idea anyway. And I always do love this dark seam purple mixed with or next to the deep turquoise. I think purple and turquoise somehow they just look so beautiful together. I guess that's what peacocks think too. Right, so now I might go back to a bit of this garnet. Make that a bit of a thicker layer. Yeah, I might go. Job might. Yes. So again, here I'm adding the pink. I don't know if I mentioned that this is pink tourmaline. 
and again that sort of that with the garnet I feel that they'll just give each other a bit of depth and I might go with this one next and there's some white do quite a thick layer of the white Gold, I didn't use much gold, did I? <clears throat> Unusual for me. There's a puppy squeak, a baby puppy squeak. They're only about two weeks old, haven't opened their eyes yet. Just about two. I think some of them should be opening their eyes and then either today or tomorrow should be starting to open their eyes. All right, so maybe some dark seam purple. Good, now then what I had also thought to do was to have another cup with just a little bit in it just to give, just to go in the corners because I hate it when you get to the corner and you have to lose a lot of your composition to go off around the corner. And so I thought, well, I did this, I've done this before, but just if you've got similar colours or the same colours made up and you can do a tiny weeny straight pour, ring pour in each of the corners and at least then you have the colours there already and if you don't want to, you don't have to go off the corners. That's the idea behind it anyway. We shall see how they turn out though. I might just use this one. Just going to be the base coat. should do it. I've got paint all over myself. All right, I'll just clear this away and be back in just a tick because I've cleaned the mat just before I started. I know it's clean so I can just scrape up what's there. Why waste paint is what I reckon. Okay, so I'm just going to use, this is the base coat, so I'll just because I'm doing them in the corners, just need to put a little bit in the corner as well. behind me chewing on a what are you chewing on oh it's a piece of firewood it's just almost going to be winter here soon so I've got the fire going because we've had 
some cold nights and I've got to keep it warm with the new puppies. And so I would rather, I don't mind the dogs chewing on the firewood. It's annoying though when they take what you've just set yourself up with. But I'd rather they chew firewood than the furniture. And dogs do like to chew, especially when they're young. And I've got two young ones. I've got a 10-month-old and a, I think she's about three months old now. So, All right, so we'll see how this goes in the corners, eh? Actually, what I might do is just give that a little tiny... Find a little stick, a little tiny stir just to get those colours mixed a little bit. I don't want it to turn to mud, but I don't want it all to come out one colour. So you can see it's like that. I don't know if you can see, it's daylight here at the moment and I've also got the overhead light on. just to get those colours in the corners, really. Don't really need to do anything with it. They will move when I move for the rest of it, won't they? All right, it's only a little canvas. I've probably got way, yeah, probably only need half this amount, really. It won't matter if I don't use it all. As long as all the colours come out. What do you think I'll do a straight pour? I see that's sort of causing a problem there, isn't it? Actually, because I might just spread that around. see any white. I put a lot of white in, remember? I put that big blob of white in. Strange. Often happens, colour will just disappear. Right. right, I'll give that a torch.
Interesting, I did this ring pour. <laughs> it does look different to where I did the straight pour, doesn't it? Different in a different way than I would have expected. Oh, I did do that bit of a travelling straight pour, didn't I? Yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's what that would have. That's what would have caused that. All right. Yeah, don't like that corner actually. Quite honestly, I only try things, but. Stretch it out a little bit first. Just don't mind that corner, that corner's quite pretty. Just let that go over a bit. Don't really see any cloud effect, eh? Let go off that corner. Baby puppy noises. Which is quite pretty at this end. Right. Let that stretch out a bit. It's like feathers. A lot of red, so I'll let that go off. Oh yeah, that's really quite pretty. Do I want to keep this? Yeah. Bends in fine. Oh, that's actually quite pretty. Don't believe it's taught me anything about the satin enamel. But it's quite pretty. Alright, I'll just may as well well I've got it up in the air like this, I'll just Scrape the bottom off. The reason why it's important to scrape the bottom off is because the paint that's... Oh, I just put my fingers all over the base, never mind. It's because the paint, see all this paint here, and that will be pulling down the paint that's on the top of your canvas. So you don't want that or you'll end up with all your paint running off. Not all of it, but it'll change your composition a lot. So you need to do that a couple of, oh, I don't know, every 10 minutes for, I don't know, until it stops running off, really. But you might just go take this in the other room while I've got it up in the air like this. And I'll give you a close-up in there. Okay. So here it is. I'm really happy with it. I think it's looking so pretty. Very feathery. So I think the satin enamels has done something. It's given it a, um, a softer look, maybe. Bit of a close up. So while I thought the, the white had disappeared, I think you can see here actually it, it's given a nice contrast at the edge of the aquamarine. I've got the flash on and the aquamarine, maybe if I tilt it you might see it a bit better. It's hard to get the right colours. Not sure about that gold in the corner if that goes or not. <laughs> anyway, I think it's looking very pretty. Oh, I love.
lovely swirls. I think it's because I did that little bit of a travelling straight pour. Anyway, there we go. Thank you so much for watching and if you haven't subscribed already, please do and I'll catch you again next time. Okay, thanks heaps for watching. Bye.